Hi, my name's Mike, and uh, I'll be taking you through the next few weeks um, through a course in Python programming. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is uh, how to set yourself up so that you can actually do some programming. Um, most of my tutorials are based on Ubuntu, but with the right software, and if you have Python installed, you should be able to run these examples and these tutorials with no problems um, on Windows or Mac. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, the IDE that I use, the Integrated Development Environment. Um, I use the Wingware IDE and the main reason for that is because it's got a very simple layout and it has some very good uh, powerful features. Um, so when I think about writing Python, I think about making sure that I have an environment that's as simple and as easy to use as possible so that I can get on and focus with the things that I'm trying to create rather than trying to remember a million keystrokes and that sort of thing. So that's why I choose Wingware. Okay, so to get Wingware, you basically go to wingware.com. You click on the download section. And on here, you'll find that there are three versions of the IDE. The first two are paid for versions. And the final one, the 101 version, is free. So that's the one we're going to go with. Now you'll notice there are Windows, Linux, and OS X versions of this. So anybody should be able to download this. It's a free copy. This is meant for educational purposes. So um, this will be ideal for anything that you're trying to learn. It also has a few features in there that basically allow it to be almost professional so that there are things you can do like debug code and uh, you should get a, a reasonably good response out of that and it'll still be pretty useful to you whilst you're using it. So once you've downloaded that, you should be able to fire up the program. and you should get an open window like this. Now, the main buttons we're going to concern ourselves with is this button row here. Um, first of all, we're going to create a new file, obviously, so let's create the new file. And then we're going to save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to call it Hello world. Okay. Now, as with all Python, um, Python needs to know which is the main script that's running so that it knows that the first set of instructions within that file are the things to start the program with. So how do we do that? How, how do we tell the program? that this is our main script and everything that runs inside here is the main part of the program. The way we do that is we say if the name of this file within the Python interpreter is equal to main then this is the main script and anything that any commands or functions that we run from here should be run. So let's make a basic function just to test it out. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to define a function. So we're going to say def for define, say hello, open and close brackets. We don't have any arguments to this function at the minute. So then we close that with a semicolon and you'll notice that wing automatically indents that for you. So it automatically knows that you're building a function and it knows to put things inwards so that any code that follows here can be identified as instructions to be said, to be done underneath the say hello function. So we've got a message Hello world. 
and we're going to print the message. And that's it. Now to call that function from in this main script, we then say hello. And that's all we need to do. And we save that. We come on to the next set of buttons that allow us to be able to, to look through code and to see whether it's working properly and see what the results are. Now there's two things you need to see here. There's the stack data area, which tells you about information or variables that are currently being used in the system. And then we have the debug IO section, which is where we should see our message hello world come out if the script's working. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, now it, it's gone to our Python shell, but the debug IO hasn't said anything. Why not? Okay. Inside of our function, we can set this round, this red circle, and that means to stop or break at this point in the, in the code. So if we were to run the code again, nothing would happen. However, if we use this extra button to the side, continue or start running to next breakpoint, this would put the, the, the IDE into a debugging mode. And then we could then look and see what's going on inside the code. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got into the code. We've got to the point where it's about to print the message out. From here, we can do a number of things. We can either look down in our stack data window, which says that locals message, which is the local variable to this function message, is filled with the string hello world. Then, once we've done that, we can then use this step over current execution point to step over the next instruction, which is the print message. So let's do that. In our debug IO, that's been printed. So this is only for showing messages in debug mode. Your Python shell will show the output of any file when it's running in its normal mode. But when you want to look and see what's happening, you look in the debug IO window. Now, if you look here to the stack data, you can see there's lots of other stuff in there. That will help you debug your program. Globals, for instance, the name of the file in the system is main, obviously, so that's good. We know that that if statement here is going to be true, and therefore will, will our function will run. If this line, this script is included in a in a group of files and this is not the main one then this here will not run so we can then use this as a kind of a way of testing out this module but then including it in other packages of, of scripts later on which is something I'll put in a different tutorial if I get enough requests going back to the debug window we've got now not just our message variable, but we've even got the return value. So we know what this function returned. It's nothing for this one because there isn't any values to return. But in the case of using other functions, it might be very useful to know if it returned anything at all. So that's a brief overview of how to basically do a Hello World program using Wing IDE and some of the features there that will help you to be able to write efficient and bug-free code.